is Jacqueline Francis and welcome to Stop Simply Under the Carpet. Well, I'm here to tell you about my new book that has just been published called The Relationship Jigsaw. Um, a lot of people have asked me why have I called it The Relationship Jigsaw and I simply explain to them that when people are in relationships or looking to get into a relationship, they're looking for this perfect fit, just like a jigsaw puzzle where you try to put the pieces together in places where it can't fit but you're trying to force it and a lot of people tend to do that in their relationships they try to fix the person or ignore certain behaviors that the person is displaying and um, try to make it fit into their relationships now um, another reason why I wrote um, the relationship jigsaw was simply because there didn't seem to be much out there in terms of um, how you become aware or educate yourself as to how to become aware of toxic behaviours or, or to learn the difference between a healthy relationship and an unhealthy relationship. Now I've spoken to many women and um, young girls and teenagers and especially the teenagers they were saying to me well you know you know that they wish that someone had told me that um, you know this was happening or, or to look out for that sign or for, for that red flag or, or whatever and maybe if they had known that information then they wouldn't have stayed in the relationship um, that long or you know or for that length of time um, and also you know I wrote the book also to um, to create this awareness that you, you know when you're in a relationship you seem to, sometimes people tend to lose themselves within a relationship and they, they've lost their voice, they've lost their identity identity, and then they've lost their self-esteem. So, you know, you know, I'm 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 an advocate and I'm really tired of um, you know, hearing it, it bothers me that the statistics are rising and even though, you know, we have had that new law of about coercive control that was introduced I think back in twenty fifteen. The rise of abuse is, you know, is still is still increasing, and I, I, you know, and clearly the message is not getting through. So what I've done with um, the relationship jigsaw, I've written it into three parts, um, but the most important part, um, I mean, it's all important, but um, part two um, is is the the part where it tells you about the different types of pieces, and I've called them, you know, for example, for chapter six, for example. It's called the Resilience um, Puzzle Piece. And chapter um, seven is called the Emotional Intelligence Puzzle Piece. Um, chapter eight is socialising, how to socialise, you, you know, the puzzle piece. So I'm just going to read you a, a part, um, an extract from the book. And it's chapter six, and it's called the Resilience Puzzle Piece. It says... How do you build resilience during or after your relationship has dissolved? Um, it was simple, for me, it was simply another day. Normal for most people, depending on their concept of normal. People getting up and going to their nine to five jobs. But for me, normal was another day that was dark. Another day that I didn't want to draw the curtains. Another day where I couldn't get out of bed knowing I had to face what I had to face in the days ahead. What I couldn't understand was what I was getting out of bed for. I knew I didn't have a 9 to 5 job because it was the time I was working from home, but I felt that I had no sense of purpose. Every day felt this, I felt this overwhelming pull further back into this dark place. As I mentioned back in chapter 1 when I told you about my story of how I was ostracised and treated by my siblings, I had hit a, blip, a roadblock. Today was different though. At the time, I couldn't pinpoint why I found myself going through the same daily rituals I had been going through for years. When you develop a sense of resilience, it provides you with the tools to adapt and bounce back from after going through a dark setback or a disappointment, changes or challenges, or even failures. It has everything to do with your mental health and how you deal with your life's challenges. However, we all recognise that these are different degrees of emotional stress, turmoil or sadness. If you're wondering how to build resilience, the good thing is that it's something that can be learnt. And it's not difficult. You can develop the change, the way you think about it in a positive way, your behaviour and your actions allow you to recover from a stressful or traumatic experience in life. 
So what if you position your resilience piece? Resilience is not putting up with or keeping quiet about something that has happened to you. Here I'm going to make recommendations um, that are small but, but will be easy for you to implement in order for you to build your resilience. These actions are things that you can start today or tomorrow with minimal effort and they will not take too much of your time but they can be easily achieved. The truth is that we all have the ability to build resilience but we are unaccustomed to coping with building resilience until a situation faces us head on. Once you strengthen and develop your resilience piece, you can shorten the length of time you stay or live in that place where you have been rejected or abused. Whatever adversity you have experienced, you need to see them as a temporary setback, something you will be able to recover from. If you take a look at your situation to build resilience, ask yourself, how can I turn this around for me? I believe if you take an optimistic stance rather than a pessimistic one, this will be your resilience piece for your relationship jigsaw. So I'm just gonna mention some of the tips here. So um, reach out for support from friends in order to create resilience, friends and family. By having support around you, you are providing yourself with encouragement and reassurance to help boost your resilience. Take a few, a few positive um, view of yourself using affirmations. Look in the mirror and say out loud whatever suits you best in the moment. I am beautiful. I am strong. I am happy. I can do anything I want to do. I can be anyone I want to be. These are only a small selection of affirmations. You can use your own, but do try and do it on a daily basis. So it becomes a bit of a ritual and your personal mantra. By doing this, you start to build your confidence and strength, growing the ability to do anything. If you are currently in a relationship, you can use the same strategies to create resilience. If you find yourself confronted in an argument, follow these actions to refocus yourself. Take a walk around the block or to the park or, or um, so that the, the resilience does not escalate. Create achievable goals. Start with bite-sized goals so you don't become too overwhelmed. Ask yourself, what is the one thing I know I, am, I can accomplish today that helps me move in the direction I want to? Take an optimistic viewpoint which will enable you to expect good things to happen in your life. Pay attention to your own needs and feelings. Perhaps participate in activities that you enjoy or find relaxing. Exercise regularly. Take care of yourself. Taking care of yourself helps you, you um, keep your mind and your bo body primed to deal with situations that require resilience. These are just some of the things that you can do to create resilience. But what are the benefits of um, building resilience? What are the benefits of having resilience? A resilient person has a tendency to be more confident, hopeful, and has a higher self-worth when times become difficult. They have the ability to overcome challenges. They recognize when they need support and utilize coping mechanisms or strategies to enable them to handle situations daily or easily. During these times when I found myself dealing with adversity or challenges, I can feel the clogs, the cogs in my mind ticking over, trying to figure out how I can deal with it and how I could resolve this situation. Having resilience means being able to problem solve, persevere in difficult situations, be good at goal setting, manage your own feelings effectively, empathize with other people and learn from your mistakes. And it also allows you to adopt independence. According to Edith Grothburn in the International Resilience Program, she devised three, a, model, a model that provides the building blocks to resilience um, using three sources and these sources are I have, I am and I can. So any of us or all of us can develop these. Tell yourself um, what these are. These things you have in your life, for example, I have committed relationships with people I trust and who love me regardless. I am a people person who is lovable. I am respectful of myself and others. 
I can communicate effectively. I can problem solve. I can resolve conflict and mediate. These three strategies allow you to identify your strengths, qualities and skills. They can be used as an antidote to building resilience. Look, as it, look at it as if it was a rubber band. When you stretch it to its maximum, it springs back. By having the I have, I am and I can strategy, you'll definitely be able to spring back from any adversity or challenges in your life. I mentioned previously um, about I, I have, I am and I can, using these as a, um, a mechanism, a coping mechanism would be fantastic in order to build your resilience. I personally build up my resilience by using these strategies. So for you, this is not going to be an impossible task and something you can start on straight away for yourself. There is nothing holding you back from living your dreams. So once you um, manage to identify what exactly res resilience is and how easily you can form resilience, and just think about it as if it were, um, again, a, a rubber band, how it springs back, or even a tennis ball. I've used a tennis ball as a, uh, a metaphor when you bounce a ball and it, and it bounces back up, that's you. How do you bounce back up from some sort of adversity? So for young girls and um, teenagers or anyone in, in particular, it doesn't really matter. If you build your resilience puzzle piece, um, that will form one part of a healthy, happy relationship. So um, I hope that you enjoyed that particular extract from my book the, on resilience. As I said, there are eight pieces for a healthy, happy relationship. Um, my book now is available on Amazon. Um, so please do safeguard yourself, even if you're not in a relationship. Learn about those red flags. So at least when you go into a relationship or looking to go into that relationship, um, arena, then you are aware, you know, you can pay attention to your in, your intuition or your gut feeling and you'll be more aware and also more educated as to what is supposed to be a healthy, happy relationship. So that's it for now. Um, please do um, contact me if you want to ask any questions. Um, my email address is info at Jacqueline-Francis.com. I'll put it in the link. And um, yeah, be happy and safe in your relationships. Bye for now. Thank you so much for listening. My name is Jacqueline Francis and you can order your copy of The Relationship Jigsaw from Amy Major Online Bookstore.